Hello and welcome to video one for week eight. In this video, I'm gonna find something called a determinant. I wanna focus on the concept here. We'll get into calculation in later videos, but I just wanna get at the idea of what a determinant is and what it's trying to do. And this goes back to the theme of symmetry, which I've talked about before, that transformations preserve some things and we can classify and understand, understand transformations by what they preserved. Linear transformation preserved addition and scalar multiplication Algebraically, that's how we understood them. Geometrically, they preserved flat objects and the origin. That was the symmetry they had, that flat things were made flat and the origin remained fixed. There are other things we can think about geometrically, and in this video, in this week, I want to think about size and orientation. So I'm using the generic size to refer to in R2 area, in R3 volume, and whatever versions of those we have in higher dimensions. In R4, you'd have an a kind of hyper volume, and you can define that in higher dimensions as well. So what happens for transformation of R2? What happens to size? Does size shrink? Do you add more to size? If you're dilating or skewing something, what kind of effect do you have on the area of things? In R3, if you've got a box with a certain volume and you act on it with a linear transformation, can you figure out what the new volume is going to be? So size is area, volume, hyper volume. Orientation's a bit trickier. So it turns out that each Euclidean space, R2, R3, Rn, has an orientation which is, it, which is uh, one of two options. And this comes from the arrangement of axes. But let me talk just about R2 for orientation. So if I have a counterclockwise circle and I act on it with a linear transformation, it might deform it, it might become an uh, ellipse or an oval or some kind of thing. Um, but I can still talk about the notion of direction. And if it's still going counterclockwise, then I'm gonna say that my, op my transformation preserves orientation. But if it starts going clockwise after the transformation, then it's gonna reverse orientation. And those are my two options. Transformations either preserve or reverse orientation. And you can think about rotations as things that preserve orientation, if I rotate something, it's still got the same orientation. Reflections are things that reverse orientation. And this, think about reading things in mirrors. If you just turn something and looking at it, it's still gonna have the same um, orientation. You just tilt your head, you can actually read it. Whereas if you look at something in a mirror, if it's been reflected, it now becomes difficult to read because its orientation has switched. So sort of normal view versus mirror view, preserving orientation versus reversing orientation. And there's a version of that in higher dimensions. That's a bit tricky to define, um, but I, I'll, leave, I'll leave us with the two-dimensional sort of analog of it. So there's a number, it's written determinant M, det M, associated to a matrix M, and it has two properties. It's a real number. Its absolute value is the multiplicative effect of the transformation on size, area, volume, hypervolume. So linear transformations have multiplicative effects. So a linear transformation will have the same effect on any object. If the determinant is two, it will double the size of any object. It would double the area in R2, double the volume in R3. If it is determinant is one half, it will shrink all volumes by one half. And that's a remarkable thing, that it, it doesn't act differently on different sized objects. If you have something huge, it'll double it. If you have something small, it'll double it. It has the same multiplicative effect on size. And that's given by the absolute value of the determinant. And that's most of the determinant. The only other thing is whether or not it's positive or negative. And the sign of the determinant is the effect on orientation. A positive determinant will preserve orientation and a negative determin determinant will have this type of mirror image of reversing orientation. And this thing, this determinant, this number associated to a matrix, you can get it algebra algebraically from the coefficients of the matrix. And that's that's a really remarkable thing. That there's gonna be some algebraic formula, which we'll get to in the next video, that tells us exactly what's going on with the effect of sign and the effect of orientation. Just before I finish this video, I wanna give a short definition that will be useful in this week a triangular matrix is a matrix where everything either above or below the diagonal is zero. So here, if I look at the diagonal here, in this case, everything below the diagonal is zero. This is called an upper triangular matrix. 
If it was the other way, if, if things above the diagonal were zero, it would be a lower triangular matrix. Here's another example. Here's the diagonal, and all six of these entries below the diagonal are zero. So this is another upper triangular matrix. That definition is going to be useful when we get to calculating determinants later in the week.